How's it going? Good. How are you? How do you feel? I'm good. You know, obviously, I mean, look, you want to win them all, but um, I'm somewhat happy with the performance. I got to go back and look at the video. Um, you know, I think just uh, maybe a lot to pick on for the first fight, having a guy whose experience is uh, cutting down. But I'm just proud of myself as far as going out there and going out there with such a savvy, fast guy that's, you know, he's been in there with world champs, he's a world champ himself, um, and then trying to go out there and score shots on him. What were you able to do to help make this fight go the distance? Um, I think I made, well, I don't know what I did to make it go the distance. Just obviously getting hit with 10 ounce gloves are not as bad as four ounce gloves. So, you know, the shots I took, nothing ever really uh, felt like an MMA fight as far as wobbling me. Um, but obviously, you know, I, shots landed to score points. And so uh, uh, I think just my entrances are too much explode, jump in and grab people, which work great for MMA. I see now that that's harder to pull off in boxing because even when you land the one shot, I clinch afterwards and look for knees and body work and takedowns. Um, so I'm happy that if I could come in and catch Cunningham with a shot, when I go back to MMA, those, that conversion will do me well. So I think as far as building up my MMA striking, this uh, an A+, plus, as far as trying to do the things that I've been trying to train myself to do, those more boxing, I didn't, you know what I mean? I didn't come behind triple jabs and double jabs. I kind of did the old, just, you know, one, two, and then come behind that, you know, which, you know, for some boxers that works, like, you know, like a John Ruiz type, but I didn't make it work as well. Great. All right. First uh, media question coming from Donna Corby. Frank, uh, first off, I want to say I'm, I'm writing for an MMA outlet, and I want to say that was an incredible uh, showing for the MMA community, probably the best performance in a crossover fight that we have uh, have seen. Talk to me about what's next for you. Are you going to, to go back to Bellator? Are you going to go back to uh, to mixed martial arts, and, and when's the time frame for that? Well, I have BKFC that I'm trying to get a fight in also now, and then uh, as far as MMA, I'm not with Bellator anymore. Um, okay. So, you know, I'm open to adventures there. Uh, one of my other trainers, uh, Carl Prince, over in Manchester, we're talking about possibly doing uh, some things over there. So just keeping my ear to the ground. Obviously, first round management, hopefully you'll find me something. Uh, and, uh, you know, before I retire, I'm fighting on the same card as my daughter, which she's doing MMA. So MMA is definitely still in the future. Being a part of this Triller experience is unreal. I mean, I've been a part of some big cards in the UFC. And I have to say, this might have been the most epic thing I've ever been a part of. So, uh, you know, let's see if Triller, I could do another one with them. Um, and, and maybe even if they, uh, you know, hell, they can add another rope at the bottom and we can do an MMA fight. You've been hit by some of the hardest hitters with those little four-ends gloves in mixed martial arts. Fedor, pretty recently, Roy Nelson, Mark Hunt. The list is 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 endless. Where does Steve Cunningham rank? Obviously, the, the gloves are different, but where does he rank in terms of the, the harder hitters you've faced? Well, no, I mean, obviously, getting hit with a four-ounce glove compared to a tenth is not a fair comparison. Uh, but as far as speed-wise, Cunningham was the fastest guy I've ever fought. Where It was weird where I'm like, you know, I'm used to being a pretty quick heavyweight. But uh, still, some of the shots he was able to land from the outside and stuff, really, uh, his head movement, too. That's the one thing that ugh, I'm having the hardest thing converting over. In MMA, if we move our head the way that Cunningham moved, our feet are still there, so I can grab singles, doubles. And I can also, after throwing that first punch, if someone makes you slip that much, you can kick the leg. So many times tonight when Steve was slipping, I, you probably can see I'm looking down at his leg going, oh, there's a sweep, there's a chop and I can't throw it. So that also made it kind of difficult. All right, thank you. Next up is Jeremy York. Uh, uh, finally good to talk to you there, Frank. Uh, I'm gonna echo what he said as well. Uh, I think this is one of the uh, better performances we've seen not only in a crossover, but uh, I, I think you held up well with, with a world-class boxer as Cunningham. Thank you, I really appreciate it. And that's really, Honestly, that took a lot of pressure off me going into this fight. I wanted to represent mixed martial arts saying, hey, we're also very good at boxing. Obviously, it was a pretty far heavy task to sit there and go, I'm going to beat a boxer in my very first fight. That's a world champion who's been in those world champions in a boxing match. But honestly, and I had said this going into it, and I stand true to my words. If I had lost a six round decision, but boxed well, that was preferable to catching Steve in the first 30 seconds. Look, I'm 275 pounds. If I would have caught him with a shot and dropped him, I don't think I'd have proved anything. Besides the fact like, well, you had a 70 pound weight advantage and you hit hard. That doesn't do, it wouldn't do well for the MMA community. I feel like going out there and going all six rounds and showing proficiency was a better statement. All right, next we have Gabriel Gonzalez. Hey Frank, first off, uh, just to echo everyone else, great performance and great showing for the MMA community. 
I was wondering, can you talk to us what it was like from your standpoint waiting for it? Because over here on watching the broadcast, there was a lot of music. I mean, are you over there hearing Doja Cat and everybody in the locker room? Or what was it like for you just waiting for your fight after the previous one? Uh, it was strange, you know? I mean, I, it was, uh, like I said, this is probably the most epic thing I've ever been a part of as far as just how complex the whole apparatus was. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, Peter and Melissa uh, Henricks, did a phenomenal job doing the most that they could try. And I mean, you have production crews here, you have fight crew here, and we're all trying to intermingle. It was very interesting though. Again, like, you know, I'm in the back, sitting there lined up, ready to walk out. People are playing music videos or, you know, it, I felt like something out of a movie set, to be honest with you. Like, I'm like, this isn't real. This is something that, you know, if someone was trying to make a movie about a fight career, this is how they would depict it. And if I was watching, I'd be like, ah, that's not realistic at all. And lo and behold, that's what we were a part of right now. And finally, you have Boxing Social. AMC here for Boxing Social in association with Bedford. Frank, um, you're very open about wanting challenges and loving challenges in life. Was your entry into boxing the challenge you, you expected it to be? And also, could I ask you, uh, you weighed in 70 pounds heavier than your opponent. Do you think maybe if you came in a little bit lighter, uh, it might have affected your performance in a, in a better sense? Um, I mean, no. I feel that right now with the lifting I'm doing, I, my last body fat check, I was like 16, 17% body fat. So what's best for me is to do this. And, and I know that might sound like a defeatist mindset. I didn't want to be good at boxing at the sacrifice of my MMA standup. I'm doing this to be a component of my, so when I fight as an MMA fighter, I'm a better MMA fighter with my hands. Um, I've kind of done that with my jujitsu. Uh, when I do jujitsu matches, you don't see me use a lot of, different guards that a lot of other guys will use because you can't use them in an MMA fight. I want to stick to things that I can cross over. Is that always going to put me in a deficit? Yeah. You know, being 275 with my strength is an asset in an MMA fight. Every time I would have clinched Cunningham in an MMA fight, my size would have been an advantage. So for me to strip down and get to 245 so that I was a faster boxer, um, that would have been unrealistic because then I'm not going to be able to take that with me into my MMA career. And ultimately, Again, I'm like a decathlete and I went, and went with the sprinters. I'm not going to take away from my other events to make me a, a sprinting specialist because let's face it, I'll never be the best boxer in the world. I look to be one of the most complete mixed martial artists. And that's what I was trying to prove tonight. And that's what my lifelong goal is. Frank, thank you so much. Thank you guys.